everybody, Beyondrew TV here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another episode here of Sunset Ridge Zoo. So yeah, this is going to be our third episode of Sunset Ridge Zoo and we are sticking with the wetlands area. Uh, yeah, today we're going to go ahead and do a pretty big 180, pretty big turnaround uh, from what we did in the second episode uh, where, we, uh, where I basically just went crazy with the foliage. Um, just wanted to kind of make a wetlands swamp um, area that just, yeah, was kind of recreating uh, the natural foliage you'd see in a swampy wetland. So just kind of went with that and um, used the crap out of the new, um, what was it, the cypress trees. And I can't remember the second new tree that we got, but it also is very, very fitting for a wetlands area. Um, so yeah, no, but like I was saying, we are doing a complete turnaround um, aesthetically from that kind of feel. And we're going to kind of jump back into um, the vibe of like the entrance area. So um, yeah, we're going to kind of have that contemporary, more modern uh, type build today. And um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and start on a big old house for the area. I think I mentioned it last time a little bit, but um, yeah, we're going to start on a coastal, uh, yeah, coastal wetlands house. Um, so this is going to have a few rooms inside of it. Um, today we're going to go ahead and cover the exterior of the building, the main um, entrance area for it and everything, um, and then also cover the first room as well. So uh, there's going to be more rooms than just one um, inside of it. But uh, yeah, this first room took a long time, much, much longer um, than I was uh, initially anticipating for it to take. But that's okay, because the end result, um, I think, turned out really, really fantastic. So I uh, really can't, um, <clears throat> excuse me, can't wait to continue this build, because uh, yeah, I'm having a bunch of inspiration for it. So speaking of inspiration, as we're doing our first little bit of build here. Um, yeah, I took a big amount of inspiration for the exterior of our uh, coastal wetlands house uh, from the, I'm probably gonna mispronounce a lot of it. It's a lot of a, um, it's from South America. There it is, Chile, it's from Chile. Uh, the Mayapo River Estuary and Wetland. Uh, so of course, found this on uh, Pinterest there and I uh, love the way that it looked on the exterior. So um, kept it for the main um, kind of look for it, kind of kept the main building look, but we kind of switched it up a little bit but yeah I did some more research on this um, Mayapo River uh, wetland um, and estuary there and it's actually a really really cool uh, little thing they have going on here uh, I just found this quick little article I'm not gonna read the whole thing but just that'd be interesting to um, because it does tie into the wetlands uh, animal pack that just kind of came out so uh, some really cool things from this uh, nature park um, this nature park is an ideal example of how cross-sector collaborative collaborative projects can generate positive sustainability outcomes for key coastal sites for migrating shorebirds. The Santo Domingo municipality started the process through their initiative to protect 40 hectare acres of key wetland and estuary habitat along the Mayapo River in Chile. Uh, in 2014, um, two, I cannot pronounce their names, two people worked with the municipality to implement different projects to promote sustainable tourism, environmental education, and scientific research in the wetlands um, area. Um, one of the people prepared a master plan where the conservation, restoration, and general areas of the of use were zoned and also drafted an action of plan that outlined different types of projects to be implemented during the next decade. Um, it kind of goes on just talking about um, more of the uh, wetlands park and just kind of um, how it's, yeah, this big, big plan. Um, and, and this is kind of a big theme that I was noticing as I was doing a research. Uh, for this build today, uh, that there's a lot of restoration projects. I think another one was uh, in Los Angeles, actually, or somewhere in Los Angeles County. Um, but yeah, there was a really, really big uh, restoration of wetlands project where they turned like an old landfill or something like that. Um, yeah, basically just returned it into uh, the wetlands that it used to be. And there was almost like an instantaneous of the uh, the animals kind of coming back and, you know, the animals, the natural plants and everything like that. So it's really cool to start to see um, a lot of cities, governments, even private private um, organizations uh, trying to restore a lot of these lands that may have been taken over by industries or um, what have you. And uh, yeah, it's just really amazing to see the um, animals kind of come back, you know, almost uh, like I said, instantaneously or just within a few years, um, kind of seeing them take back over kind of thing. So I um, mean, another really cool thing about this build is that it is also um, a sustainable architecture, which also is something that really, really interests me. Um, you're seeing a lot, uh, a really big push for sustainable architecture and kind of seeing the negative uh, climate impact that like, you know, concrete and glass and, um, you know, yeah, like these 
huge mega skyscrapers all built out of glass. It's like, hey, that's not the greatest for the environment, it turns out. But uh, yeah, this building that we're modeling after today uh, practices uh, sustainable architecture. And if you haven't heard about that before, um, a quick little definition is uh, sustainable architecture is architecture that seeks to minimize the negative envir environmental impact of buildings through improved efficiency and moderation in the use of materials, energy, development, space, and the ecosystem at large. So um, yeah, this building, again, is used out of, or it was built out of reusable like um, materials, the wood. I know that there's like this new type of um, super strong wood that they can use for, um, again, like skyscrapers and just different kind of buildings and everything. So yeah, and you know, again, this uh, whole project idea, whole thing of uh, Sunset Ridge Zoo is that it's supposed to be kind of a um, more contemporary or more modern uh, zoo that was kind of built um, in the last few years. So, you know, I definitely would think that they would want to uh, try and drive up sustainability and uh, have a not a big uh, carbon footprint. There it is. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling through this, but I'm going to get there. <laughs> um, so yeah, trying to keep those kind of things um, in mind there. So uh, but yeah, as we continue with the build, getting close to the um, going on the inside here, I wanted to make the exterior uh, kind of shift into um, as far as the foliage goes, kind of shift into this coastal type feel. So again, the uh, second episode that we did with the uh, Red Crown Crane and the Copybearers, you know, that was really, really almost um, borderline swampy uh, there. So I wanted to have a little bit of a transition um, so that this didn't just feel like a straight up swamp as we were coming through here. And here we go, starting on the foliage uh, work. But yeah, just wanted to kind of get a slight transition into more of a uh, coastal uh, wetlands type feel. Because I mean, it really is, you know, amazing how uh, you can say wetlands, you know, Know, a wetlands build but that could mean a variety of things whether it's coastal swamp um, even here where I live in the uh, Midwest United States um, you know you wouldn't really think that uh, there'd be a lot of wetlands but you know there's like prairie wetlands essentially I pass by a uh, wetlands park reserve uh, every day for work and um, it's a border between a straight prairie that you know if you what you would picture as a prairie, but then there's also like cypress trees sitting in the middle of like a wetlands type thing. So, you know, the word wetlands really just covers a huge variety of uh, different things that you could cover here. So yeah, just wanted to, again, try to get a little bit of a difference here in the uh, foliage and just kind of the vibe and feel as we kind of go into a, um, again, kind of like California coastal uh, wetlands section. So um, as we do that foliage there, again, we're doing a lot of the techniques I've shown off a lot of times on the channel, but this, if this is your first time uh, watching the channel or uh, stumbling upon the channel first off hi hi hello how are you <laughs> um but yeah i like to um really do cluttered foliage so um really just stacking a number of different foliage bits um on top of each other so right here we have like the elephant grass the drin grass um the beach grass from the frontier pack which is a modded um yeah, modded pack in the game. Um, we use uh, the, yeah, the mangrove trees here a little bit, but you know, I just use a ton of different um, foliage bits to kind of stack on top of each other until you get this really dirty, grungy um, type feel to this uh, this little wetlands area there. And then we also end up with this perfect, uh, I, I never plan these, but they always seem to pop up, but this perfect little vista, perfect little view um, from overlooking this little uh, coastal wetlands foliage section straight onto our building. So it's just like, hey, I, I did the frame. There it is, there's the frame right there for the picture. Uh, but as we're doing some more foliage here, um, thought I'd go, have, go ahead rather and ramble off uh, the few animals that I kind of came up with for our house. Now this list has expanded. Um, I did not include the um, animals, or I didn't include all of the different animals and species and everything on here. Um, but these are like, I guess, the staples of the um, of the house here. So I'm thinking that we're gonna do the bald eagle. However, someone in a recent stream I did, I mentioned this and they said, maybe instead of the bald eagle, we could do, Oh, I'm drawing a blank, but some sort of hawk, I believe. And I believe it was a hawk of some sort. So, um, yes, either if it was the person that commented that is watching the video, please comment down below what um, bird you were thinking of. Or, yeah, uh, you who's listening to this now, let me know what kind of um, bird would be a good substitute for the bald eagle. I'm not opposed to the bald eagle, but um, I do understand that there might be some concerns of, like, holding it on the um, interior of this house or something. Anyway, so we got the bald eagle, um, the American beaver, uh, the American bullfrog, which we're going to see today, uh, the leopard shark, um, the river otter, and the Virginia possum. So let's see. So we have the American beaver in game from the North America Pact, if I, uh, if I remember correctly. The American Bullfrog, I am using as an exhibit piece uh, from the, it's a mod pack as well. Um, and it gives you just basically a little, um, 
bullfrog little dude that you can, <laughs> little dude yeah bullfrog little dude that you can kind of place wherever you want to and i uh speaking of that i do hope that the modders in the future that we can get some more animals like the exhibit animals where we can kind of um place them exactly how we want them sure they don't move around um but i do think it's kind of cool that we're able to essentially have a bunch of like taxidermy uh realistic taxidermy animals that we can just kind of set up however we uh however we want to um again it kind of is a bummer that they don't move around but um it's kind of cool that we can just kind of set them and pose them exactly how we want to. Anyways, total tangent there. Uh, so yeah, bald eagle, American beaver, um, American bullfrog, leopard shark, river otter, and Virginia possum. Um, and then also the leopard shark um, is made by Leaf, because that is a modded animal. The river otter is made by Lion, uh, Lion Rider, because that is also a modded animal. And the Virginia opossum is from Mega Gaming Rex and Giorno Pizza, also a modded animal. So um, yeah, I know all those animals might not fit the... I mean, they kind of fit like the coastal feel, but um, yeah, I was wanting to actually put animals in all of these habitats or enclosures that we're building today um, instead of having a bunch of like uh, implied ones. So um, yeah, I was having a little bit of a struggle. That was really the biggest struggle with this build was trying to find either uh, modded animals, in-game animals, or a combination of the two that we could actually put um, that, that kind of fit the theme of this California coastal wetland. Um, and you know, we could actually have in-game and everything. So I think we got a pretty good list. Um, but yeah, as we kind of move on to the interior, which oh, we're at the sign now so we should be moving on there we did it we hallelujah we're finally on the interior <laughs> um uh, but as we move on to the interior i just was kind of feeling the lack of animals um, overall, so just um, I started adding some random like cockroaches and um, some like what else? We do some random lizards that I'm again I'm pretty sure don't fit really the coastal vibe. Um, but you kind of see this at zoos too, where um, even though if it doesn't, you know, if you go into a house that's like Tropic World or you know the Congo of or the uh, Tigers of the Congo or whatever, you know, whatever. Insert uh, your local zoo's house here. It's not like they always just have those type of animals, right? They got to kind of fill out the uh, animal roster with. Uh, kind of some random animals, I guess you'd say. Um, so, but uh, yeah, again, as we're kind of moving into the uh, interior section here, I know we, there was kind of a gap there. We um, just kind of stumbled onto the interior with all of a, a layout kind of already going. Um, again, I do do some hot doo doo. Uh, I do some live streams every once in a while when I get off work early enough. Um, so a lot of this uh, initial interior setup was done during that uh, live stream there. So do be sure to uh, have your notifications on if you'd like to be uh, notified when I go live. That's the best way to uh, kind of get a notification. Or, you know, follow me on Twitter or Discord as well. Links uh, down in the description down below. And I always update those when I'm going live or I also, I also, I also post some uh, work in progress pictures on Twitter and Discord. So if you want to get a little bit of a sneaky peeky um, into the next episode, I definitely post pictures all up on the socials there. So, uh, but yeah, as we're going into our big main part of the build here, the interior. Um, yeah, maybe this looks a little familiar to some people, but if it doesn't right off the bat, uh, this was very heavily inspired by the seas with Nemo and friends at Walt Disney World. So if you have not been there before, um, it is a, uh, it's an older attraction that has a overlay of Nemo and friends, but essentially it's a, um, it's an aquarium. It's an aquarium ride through uh, on an Omni mover uh, system. So yeah, you board your clam shell and it kind of just takes you through uh, uh, an aquarium and it's kind of really cool. You could see, you know, real life fish, but they also, uh, what is it like superimpose uh, Nemo and friends kind of on there and retell the story of, uh, of the movie of Nemo and stuff. So it's pretty fun ride. It's uh, yeah, it's a good time. But the, uh, the queue line uh, is really, really, I've always loved the queue line. It's, it's a really cool thing where you start like on the decks or on top of the dock area or on the sandbars of, uh, I'd want to say like a California beach line there um, and then you kind of slowly make your way like under the water to where you're like under the docks and everything and then uh, you kind of uh, shrink yourself down to be a fish essentially so it took a lot of inspiration from uh, excuse me took a lot of inspiration from uh, that queue line there did not mirror it exactly but again we took a heavy amount of inspiration to the point where uh, speaking of Twitter some uh, someone on Twitter was like is that the uh, seas with Nemo and friends uh, queue line and it was like yes it is good eye <laughs> so um, but yeah no that is uh, pretty much what we do the rest of the build here I see that we just completed the uh, American bullfrog uh, habitat there or the American bullfrog um, enclosure and really the plan when I was going through this originally was not to have any enclosures this was kind of just a 
again, in my mind, when I first started of it, I was so heavy on the uh, mirroring this after a theme park ride or a, you know, a queue line like that, that I was like, okay, this is a queue line. There's not gonna be any animals. It's just the, uh, the lead in right to the actual main house. But as I was looking at it, it is a pretty dang big section to just have zero animals um, throughout. So um, yeah, as we just kind of got building here, uh, just a lot of little areas to kind of have these peekaboo um, little habitats. I don't know what you would actually call them, but just these little habitats that are just kind of built into the rocks and, you know, they're not really overly big. Um, sure, there could probably be some more room for some of these, especially like the lizards, I guess. And we also have a boa constrictor snake. Um, so I hopefully did a decent amount of job of giving them enough room in their habitat. Um, if not, sorry, Mr. Boa Constrictor, but your habitat looks too good to mess with at, at this time. So, um, but yeah, so hopefully we um, did a okay job with the, on the welfare side. Um, but you know, again, it's, we're kind of just going for the look, looky looks here. Looks really, really cool there. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, no, again, uh, pretty much that is the rest of the episode is just just making a lot of these little um, peekaboo uh, little or little cubby type um, habitats and everything. Uh, again, we had the, um, let's see, one frog here, two frog there, the cockroaches, the lizard, the boa constrictor. So that's it, yeah, I think there's four um, animals inside here. Now there is room to add some more. Um, I'll be honest with you, two things happened. One, I couldn't think of any, or I couldn't find rather any more um, animals that would kind of fit the theme in here. Um, so yeah, if you can think of an animal to kind of fit in, we can build like an implied uh, kind of habitat for them. I'm definitely okay to pad the numbers on the, um, on the build here. Oh yeah, and then the second thing that happened is I lost inspiration and it's been too long uh, since an episode. <laughs> this, like I said at the beginning of the episode here, the build here uh, took way longer than I thought because I, I really knew that I wanted to make a, um, the Seas with Nemo and Friends was like a big inspiration for me. And then, you know, I found this um, this exterior part here for the building. So I was like, oh, cool. I have it all ready to go. Uh, I have all my inspiration. This is going to take no time at all three or four days later, and here's the episode finally. So yeah, it's just, it's always funny how that works out. Um, you can, ever since the Planet Coaster days, basically, it's it's always been like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna jump in and build a restroom real quick. Or hey, I have this idea for, you know, a food court. Let me just j uh, jump in and build that real quick. Meanwhile, <laughs> you know, or it, it, fast forward like six hours later, like, yes, I completed the front facade of my building. That was supposed to take three hours in general to do. Awesome. <laughs> so that's just kind of the way the cookie crumbles there. So, uh, but hey, there's, um, there is actually kind of a lot more um, in this build to do. I'm not sure how much I'm going to show. Um, I've mentioned this in the past though. Um, I'm, I get really fidgety and spin the camera around when we're doing uh, interior work. I just like to look at all the little details and try and fill everything out uh, to the max that I can. However, that does not equal a, um, a, it does not equal a smooth um, time lapse here. It can be a little bit uh, stomach wrenching uh, there. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll see how long that we uh, let this go for. But overall, make sure you stick around to the very end uh, because I will do a fun little cinematic, and you kind of get a really cool look at um, how the interior fully came um, came out and everything there. I think it came out really, really nice, and I'm, I'm just I'm really proud of how it came out. Basically, it was a really, really fun build uh, to do, and yeah, I think it kind of shows um, how much fun. I was having in the final uh, final product. So, uh, but yeah, the next few, I hope the next one episode, I don't want to take too, too much time on this um, this house here, um, but I'm also not going to like shortchange it kind of thing or half-ass it, <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, hopefully there's only one more episode of this, but I mean, who am I kidding if, the, if uh, one room took this long of an episode to do uh I, mean, I can't imagine the next two rooms and that's that's the plan i think we're gonna do two more rooms uh the next one's gonna shift tone a little bit so we can um get the uh, american beaver and maybe the um eagle slash hawk in so um we'll get those two in um and then we gotta get the um possum we'll probably get the possum in there as well so maybe we'll get the uh beaver the virginia possum uh the eagle <sighs> and beaver. I can't remember if I mentioned that, but there's four animals right there that could probably um, work well together um, in a room. And then the leopard shark is left over. And a leopard shark, I think would actually be, now that I just, I'm looking at the list, I think the leopard shark makes most sense for the next room. Kind of leads in from this uh, California coastal type feel into the leopard sharks um, habitat, which we can kind of stick with this coastal type feel. And then the last room will kind of be that more, I guess, straight up Americana um, type 
room with the uh, beaver, bull, or, uh, be- beaver, eagle, uh, otter, and a Virginia possum. So we'll try to make it all kind of flow together nicely. But um, yeah, overall, uh, I'm having a ton of fun with this coastal wetlands house. So yeah, make sure comment down below. Let me know what do you think of it so far. I'm definitely open to all of the ideas. As you can, um, as I mentioned earlier, that's the biggest struggle bus that I'm having right now is just kind of um, thinking of natural animals to kind of uh, fit in here. And on top of that, if um, if you do think of a good animal, try and find me a link to the mod for it or um, or see if we have it in the base game or a DLC or something. Because again, I would love to actually include uh, the animals here like I'm doing right now with the, um, the prop exhibit pack or the animal exhibit pack being able to put in those awesome uh, giant cockroaches and we'll start to put in the lizards and everything. I just think it adds uh, so much more life to it than having a uh, uh, empty pen or an empty enclosure there. So, um, but yeah, like I said, I'll let the video run for just a little bit more if it's, as long as it's not too uh, stomach inducing, stomach churning or anything like that. But uh, yeah, like I said, stick around till the very end for the cinematics, get a nice clear look at how everything came out. And yeah, if you're not already, be sure to hit that subscribe button, stay up to date with all the fun things on the channel, which is all about Sunset Ridge Zoo now. So um, yeah, you'll get a notification for that uh, next video comes out and also hit the like button helps out the channel helps out the video and everything so hey thanks so much for hanging out always do appreciate you and yeah we will see you in the next episode of sunset ridge zoo have a good one